All right, everybody, we're back. My next guest tonight is one of the most important directors around today. He is responsible for numerous films, including The Godfather Movies and Apocalypse Now. His latest film, The Rainmaker, opens November 21st. Please welcome Francis Ford Copeland. <laughs> Thank you so much. Now, by way of explanation, I, I should tell people that, that, that aren't aware, you have a very distinguished uh, vineyard. You have a winery. And I brought you the new 93 Rubicon, just, just released. Thank you very much. This is great. There he Andy, goes. your glass, please. Yes, uh, thank you. This is nice. This is wine that you have made, is that right? Well, yeah. I mean, I didn't squeeze the grapes with my feet, but, uh, <laughs> but it's, it's the grapes that we, we live amidst. Right. This is pretty much, this is the wine that you have made <laughs> over, uh... And when was this made, this wine, actually? <laughs> is it... Well, that's, uh, that's the 93 vintage, and so we're just releasing it now. Okay, and this is, uh... How is it, you know, you're a wine fanatic, pretty much. If if you're in a restaurant, do you return a lot of bottles of wine if you don't like them? I think I've done it once. Really? Yeah. You're not... Sometimes I do it. Just... I don't know anything about wine, but just to not look like an idiot, I say, no, I, I don't think so. This is... Uh, I don't... I don't... This is not going to do. It's pretty rare. It's pretty rare to come a, a, across a bad bottle. But right. I mean, if you're spending a lot of money on a bottle and it doesn't please you, you should send it back. This is very good, by the way. Mm. It's very nice. Well, Do you like yeah. it, Andy? It's delicious. Okay. Great. I want to ask about the, uh, your new movie, The Rainmaker. Right. I heard something very fascinating, that to get some crucial performances from some of your actors, you, um, you tried some interesting things with the actors. You actually had, uh, well, uh, well, for no, we example, just, Virginia Madsen. Actually. We would just do anything to try to make the performances fresh. And so that means, you know, very often you're shooting a shot and the actors thinks he knows what's going to come, and so you try to do surprises or things that they're not expecting just to get real reactions as though mm -hmm. in life, I think. Uh, in, in Virginia Matson's case, she plays a, a part of a woman who has been pretty much harassed and brutalized in this company. So she was about to go on to the stand to do her testimony, and she walked in a room, and all of a sudden she was sur surrounded by the executives of this big company who in the story had done it, and they started actually doing it to her, and, mm -hmm. and like getting her to sign off and accept the check, and they were pinching her and being very abusive to her, and then she walked right out of that, almost in tears, right onto the, right onto the stand. Just to get a real reaction. Just to try to do anything, you know, to, uh, to freshen them and have them be as believable as Tell they people can. what it's Matt Damon, I guess, this is did something interesting in a uh, trial scene. I, I was astonished because he gives his su a summary uh, uh, for the case, and uh, how do I say this? And I, I just it's okay. We're on very late at night, really, okay. and everyone, all our well, audience can well, handle he's it. He's doing this. Uh, he's doing this. This uh, the summary. And I looked at his pants, and I saw something coming out of his pants. I thought it was like a couple of ping pong balls or something, I, or that you know that he had put some styrofoam thing in there, and then he was he was trying to talk. And at one point, John John Voigt was the one he was giving the testimony to, and at one set he says, and I want you to realize what balls I must have to do this, and he turned around, and in fact that was his private part. Sticking <laughs> and so you got John Voigt's reaction yeah, I mean, on John camera. John Voigt looked and was astonished, and it was a room full of all the people, you know, there were a lot of, uh, it was a uh, uh, mix. So I'm going to look for that reaction in the film. I'm going to, I'm going to see one of does he give you one of those kind of cartoons? You know, there was, and they did a lot of things like that just to kind of keep everyone on mm -hmm. their toes. I, uh, of course, I'm a, uh, as just about everybody is, a huge uh, fan of the Godfather films. It's the 25th anniversary mm -hmm. of the uh, first Godfather movie, and they had a big get-together in, uh, I guess was it was in Los Angeles. No, and we all went in San Francisco. San Francisco. All, all the cast came back. Except for Brando. Was there, do you know why? There was a rumor that he didn't show up because he wanted $100,000. Well, I mean, you know... In uh, ice cream. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, a true story of Marlon Brando actually used to keep incredible amounts of ice cream in his freezer, mm -hmm. but he would lock it with a chain and lock so he wouldn't go at it. Why he kept it, I don't know. But the story is supposed oh, to be Oh, so that true. he couldn't get at right, it? Right, right. But the story is one night he couldn't stand and he went down with a gun and he shot the lock. <laughs> <off> the <gun. laughs> 
Oh, he had to get that ice cream. Yeah, yeah. he is a, a, a wonderful and extremely uh, original man, and, and it's not his thing to go to a, an sure. event like that. He, just, he I don't think he feels comfortable. But he's a very wonderful, a very very affectionate, nice man. Okay, well we have a little treat tonight, Jeff. I think we have. Do we have time for this? And we got to try this uh, in honor of the 25th anniversary of The Godfather. We introduce Seth Eisler. Uh, he is a gentleman who has completely memorized the film from beginning to end. He's devoted his life to it, and for your enjoyment, he will now perform the classic opening scene from The Godfather. Enjoy. I believe in America, and I raised my daughter in American fashion. Two months ago, her boyfriend, he took her for a drive with another boyfriend. They made her drink whiskey, and then they tried to take advantage of her. She resisted, so they beat her like an animal. The judge, he sentenced these two boys to three years in prison. I suspended the sentence. They went free that very day. Then I said to my wife, for justice, we must go to Don Corleone. Why did you go to the police? Why didn't you talk to me first? <laughs> I didn't want to get into trouble. I understand. Trump paradise in America. You had a good trade. Please protect the jail and double courts of law. You didn't need a friend like me. But, uh, now you come to me and you say, Don Corleone, give me justice. But you don't ask with respect. <laughs> you don't offer friendship. You don't even think to call me Godfather. I'll give you anything you ask. Very good. Exactly how the scene played out. The Rainmaker opens nationwide November 21st, and uh, I'll be looking for those reactions. That sounds. Thank you very much for bringing the uh, wine. My pleasure. Very good to have you here, Thank sir. You. Francis Ford Coppola will be right back. Green Day is coming up.